Welcome everyone to 7 Minutes or Less, talking about the shows you love and want to get into. Today, we will be talking about The Last of Us, Season 1. The Last of Us stars Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey as Joel and Ellie portraying the iconic characters from the extremely popular 2013 video game. The Last of Us show shares the same plot as the game where Joel is a smuggler tasked with escorting a teenage girl named Ellie across the post-apocalyptic United States. Our characters Joel and Ellie with different goals in mind are brought together in the most unusual of circumstances. Together Joel must survive with Ellie as she is seen as humanity's last hope. Pedro Pascal is always a welcome sight in anything he plays in since knowing him from Game of Thrones is Oberyn Martell, and his voice and minimal appearance in The Mandalorian. His counterpart, Bella Ramsey, was a surprise as she too has been in Game of Thrones and observing this decision from afar and having zero anticipation of who could best portray these characters from a video game. It's hard to see anyone else do a good job than these two. In the first episode, we see a world much like our own in 2003 before the outbreak and social collapse. We see Joel and his daughter, Sarah, going about day-to-day -day life. We get a genuine look, but shall we say a glimpse, into the world of Joel and the relationship he has with his daughter. There is a slow burn to the apocalypse occurring. Then the episode emerges into the chaos, and it's a fight to survive moving from point A to point B. Experiencing this episode was enthralling, to say the least. I had my doubts at first, wondering if it'll be a lazy and rushed production, or maybe the story itself would be half-assed in a way that would only try to be compelling. Instead, I saw an hour and a half episode dedicating its first half, establishing Joel and Sarah's relationship together. This aspect is told through Sarah's perspective, so take that as you will, but it was a very wise decision, in my opinion, to take that approach. The second half makes its way into establishing the world as everyone knows it after the collapse. The chess pieces are moving into place, making Joel and Ellie meet, and the plot is then established, thus starting our journey into season one. With all that said, I loved this first episode. It quite literally lives rent free in my head. For The Last of Us, we will very quickly learn that the apocalypse is going to be the atmosphere, but not always the conflict. This is more focused on character drama and getting our characters to checkpoints of character beats that feel more natural to the story. Absolutely, 100%, the action in this is good, with the clickers and the fungi infected attacking our characters in different circumstances. But at the end of the day, it's not the selling point. It's definitely an additive. Before we can get behind the idea of economical restructure, societies rebuilt, and social rebirth, we have to take a deep dive into these characters, find out what makes them tick, and get behind their characterization to know if anything is worth it. Joel and Ellie are our characters that are 100% gloriously human, and by the middle of the episode we understand what it takes to feel and be human with them. Joel is a tormented middle-aged survivor keen on keeping his distance in this world, with one priority, to contact his brother on the other side of the U.S. Ellie is a angry, albeit playful and compassionate 14-year-old that happens to have a secret that cannot be told to many, which adds to the conflict earlier in the show that makes a desperate attempt to escape the confines of the contained zones to where they need to go. Moving on from the first episode, the second episode continues the journey of Joel and Ellie with smuggling partner Tess that Joel is close to, but not without a cold opening first, to give you one last grueling detail that this infection is going to spread without hope, without prejudice, and definitely without any chance of survival. This is a fascinating cold open that sets the tone, whereas the end of the second episode shows how drastic this journey is going to change. Then, well, well, we, we get to the third episode. Say what you will. I loved the third episode, another one that lives rent-free in my head. It's more of a deviation from the story to tell a story between two lovers on how they met and how their lives intertwine with Joel and Tess's. It's a beautiful story, but to anyone not a fan of stories being told and then sidelined to tell another story, this could test the patience of some, including and not limited to those who are not a fan of same-sex lovers and the depiction and content that usually goes with it. In my opinion, though, it is emotionally resonant and 
potent. Our next episode shows Joel and Ellie in a bit of a bind as they travel into the city and come across rebels and a vindictive rebel leader who is after two kids named Sam and Henry. The fourth episode brings Joel and Ellie closer together, showing one another what they are capable of emotionally and physically combating the threats against them. This leads directly into the highly acclaimed and heartbreaking fifth episode that has Joel and Ellie team up with Sam and Henry. We then move forward in the sixth and seventh episodes where our goals of our characters are met but at an emotional and physical consequence. Joel has a lot of accepting to do given the journey he has gone through so far along with Ellie as we get an episode dedicated to her and what she endured before the events of meeting Joel. The eighth and ninth episode put our characters to their worst fears bringing them to their knees with controversy in tow. Most of which are still debated between the game and show itself from the fans of both mediums. In the end, this show really blew me away with its approach to the source material and created an effective storytelling to those like myself who never played the game. You'd be surprised how genuinely funny the show is with the threats ranging from man versus nature, but it's more man versus man. And if you can tolerate another zombie apocalypse show, I highly recommend this one. Wouldn't mind owning this show in any capacity on Blu-ray or Voodoo. All right, guys and gals, thank you all so much for watching. If you have anything to say, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss anything. And with all that said, don't forget to like and subscribe as well.